okay so yesterday uh we have seen like you know a very important rule like you know i'm saying all the rules are important because the most the rules which i'm covering like you know uh like routing and sla is like you know are the very important rules basically so sla that we have seen yesterday like you know we have seen that you know in sla we have three timelines one is the uh, issues and okay so one that that you know the sla is like you know um uh, of course that we know it like you know i mean sla is not a Oh, in very specific to Pega, it's a common term, like you know, through which we can monitor the task, you know, whether they are where they whether they are completed on the timely basis or not. So, on so in the Pega, we have seen yesterday that you know how can we configure SLA. I mean, then we have goal deadline and pass deadline, and another important thing that we noticed yesterday is, uh, the goal and deadline basically you know starts together. I mean, for example, if let's say that assignment reaches at nine thirty. Then the goal time, let's say it's two minutes, though it's it will be basically it's nine thirty two, okay. So and then goal time basically like you know the deadline time reaches at nine thirty. It's not it will not reach at nine thirty six. It's not after goal time it will reach. It's something like you know it's nine four minutes means from from four minutes from when the assignment is ready. So that's why it's at nine nine thirty four. And the pass deadline is something we have seen that it it has a special feature, which through which we can repeat. Oh, that particular interval. Like for example, every one minute we can just keep on uh, notifying that particular person, or keep on you know monitor, uh, uh, like you know, um, uh, 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 or notify that manager, like saying that okay, this task is pending, this task is pending, you know, something like that. So that is something you know. Uh, we have seen that, and the pass deadline basically starts after when the deadline, you know, after the like you know deadline gets finished. So so till now, like you know, we have seen about case types for process or flow properties, exchange flow actions, SLA classes, and then we have yesterday we have also seen the significance of class group. You know why there there is a class group, okay? And then we have seen right, and so I've just written a definition over here. Like you know, this is a group of classes basically, like whose instances basically get stored in a single table. You know where this class is mapped to. And then uh, we have seen about rule sets. The rule sets that we know we you know rule sets, and we have you know we divide all the rule sets into versions, where that versions are major, minor, patch, and and every release basically you know we just increment the patch versions basically. And then uh, then we have seen about yesterday like you know or for yesterday we have seen about routing where we have seen the difference between like you know work list and a work basket, and also we have seen that you know where, like you know where. That you know, uh, where the assignments get stored, like you know, it's depending upon like you know, these are the two tables: PCA assigned work list and PCA assigned work baskets. So these are the two tables where the Pega basically stores the assignment. So depending upon where that you are routing it to. Now, for example, if you have if you have routed that assignment to the work queue, then the Pega will create an instance of assigned dash work basket. If you have routed the assignment to the work list, then it will create an instance of assigned dash work list class, and it will store it in the this table. Like that, you know. So again, as I said, so it's very like you know one of the most uh, like you know famous interview question, and like you know uh, like you know this SLA one, like you know when this goal and deadline ramp reaches and all this stuff. Okay, so and uh, and again that important one, like you know why what is the significance of class group and a work pool? Like, again, you know very important question, like you know or very important concepts also in Pega that uh, we should be aware of. Okay, so uh, so today uh, we'll see an, another type of a rule which is called a decision rule. You know, so now uh, let me follow the uh, application. So now what is happening? So yesterday I have shown, uh, given you the uh, hint, right? So what is now currently what is happening is, let's say I'm applying, let's say first name, last name that I'm filling my details. So uh, so of course, and yeah, another thing that I forgot to mention here, that validations too, right? I mean, we have learned about validations, which is again a very important rule. So here in this one, we have seen that a difference between a validate rule, of a validate rule and edit validate rule. Again, like you know, very important uh you know concept that we know, like you know, we have seen that edit validate rule, like you know, we we have to write a Java code. So the Pega has provided like you know many out of the box uh, edit validate rule that we can make use of it. Otherwise. If, uh, if 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 there is a significance validation that you have to do it, you know, which is not provided by the Pega, then you can write your own edit validated true. The only thing is that you know you have to be you should you should you should know the Java. I mean, you should have done Java knowledge for writing it. There. And whereas in the, in the case of validation rule, I mean validated rule, which we refer it in a flow action, 
so in that case um, uh, well in that case like you know so we, we there is no java code and all the stuff is needed all that we need to do is we'll just use a functions basically like date functions and all those things you know for, for example we have done it for this date of birth or phone number or email address and all this stuff okay so now uh okay so now let's say i'm applying for a loan and then if i'll continue it and then uh, uh so here it is so now it's approval rejection screen right so now for example i have rejected it so saying that you know for proper reasons and all this stuff i've written a reason so and then uh, there is an email going on like you know which says the loan got approved which is not as per the business right i mean which is not like correct basically not as per the business also right i mean it's something i mean if something goes wrong i mean some if the manager has approved it then only i know i should send this uh, approval email to the customer otherwise i should send this rejection email to the customer so in that case, so what we have to do is right now, like, you know, so in that case, like, you know, something that, you know, you want to deviate your process, you know, from one, uh, or, you know, one way to another way. For example, it's a based on the conditions you want to deviate your process. For example, you want to run that particular process or flow only when, uh, let's say, if it's, if it's a senior citizen or if it's not a senior citizen, then there's no point of, you know, uh, running that particular process so in this case also like you know we have to decide like you know if let's if let's say the managers approved it then we'll go to this email notification i mean we'll just carry on like our normal process or else what we'll do is like you know uh, if manager has rejected it or bank representative has rejected the loan application then we have to jump here this approval rejection um uh, approval rejection like you know of uh, alternate stages Okay, so now again, like, you know, so I just put it here in the case type also, we have seen like, you know, the, what is the difference between a primary stages and alternate stages. Okay, it's important thing, basically. Okay, so now, uh, uh, so, you know, we have to jump to this alternate stage, like saying that. So now what we'll do is like, you know, I'll just open up this process. Okay, here. So now uh, we know we know about like now the uh, simple sh shapes that we know is a uh, one shape that we know this is a start shape. So every process will have a start shape and will have an end shape. And then now this is an assignment shape. So yesterday, uh, I mean, uh, since two days, like, you know, we are talking about this assignment shape only. One is that we talked about uh, our routing, right? How we can route it to the work list and work queue. And yesterday we have also placed the uh, cell room over here. Like, you know, so this is the cell room that we have created yesterday, where in which like, you know, we have given um, a, like you know, a goal deadline and pass deadline, and we are and we are you know, increasing, increasing the urgency. So yesterday I've shown you, right? I mean, how that Pega is increasing the urgency. So by looking at this urgency, I can get to know that, okay, so I have to wrap up this assignment first, and then, you know, our rest are like, you know, um, uh, uh, then like, you know, I have to wrap up the next uh, uh, assignments or task, basically, you know, which is present in the, in, present inside my work list okay so now after this like you know so the decisions like you know there are four types of decisions mostly like you know that we use in our, uh, our development basically so they are when rule so this is a when rule and then decision table then decision tree and a map value or a decision map so in the older versions of pega i know we used to call this as a decision map but now that pega has changed this to map value like you know i mean older versions we used to call a class group then pega now is changing to work pool and old older versions for the we used to call work queue as a work basket, you know, like that. In the similar way, like, you know, in the older version. So I'm, I'm, the only thing is that I'm just telling you that older version's name because uh, somewhere like, you know, let's say someone someone said like, work okay, a decision map. So you should not get confused. Like, you know, okay, what it is, is it a new rule and all these things, but no. Something like, you know, that, that person basically means that map value only or someone mentioned work basket. So that work basket is nothing but a work queue. So it's all, all everything is basically similar. Only change changes that, you know, I mean, the pay has changed the name. I mean, like that, that's it. Okay, so now first we'll see. So today we'll see only these two rules, when rule and decision table. And then tomorrow we will see like, you know, a difference between like decision table and decision map. Okay, so, okay. So now uh, what we'll do is, we have like, you know, in, in Pega, we have one shape, which is called as a decision uh, as a decision shape. So now if I do a right click, and then you can see here, these are the different shapes that we have it, like our assignment shape that we know it. The assignment shape is like, you know, already I have shown you, right? Work, one work object can have multiple assignments. 
and then like you know here it is and then we can route this task to someone else and you know we can add SLA and all this stuff and then we second one you can see here right as a decision and we, in the automation we have already discussed about send email like you know we are sending an email to the customer and all the stuff so we have already used this uh shape in our uh, in our last stages in the order stage and then send email stage so we'll not be talking about this now so we'll talk about this shape you know i mean now for the next two days like for the, for the tomorrow also we'll talk about this shape only so now i'll just click here so okay i'll delete this okay so i've done a right click either uh, there are many ways that you can add a shape like you know either you can go here and you can add a shape or else that that plus icon or else you can do a right click from your you know a mouse and then and then you can just click on this decision shape you know so here it is and if you want to delete it then you know either you can double click on it and then click uh, the or you can just single click on also like you know and then if you click the delete button from your you know uh, uh keyboard like you know it will get deleted or else um like that you know or else if you do a right click and if you delete it it will get deleted and i mean not not with only decision shape but all the shapes that whatever that you want to delete so slowly slowly you know you will just get to know all these things you know when you practice it and all the stuff so i'm adding this decision shape here so i'll just extend this out and then okay i'll connect here and then if i double click on this uh, decision okay so now i'll just change the label to ease proof yeah, just press this and then here what type of decision that you want to use it that you have to choose here so now uh, fork means fork means nothing but it's a it's a it's basically if you want to use a when rule so you know you have to use you yeah you can go with the fork or else if you have directly expression that you know you can just place it over here like you know for example i can say that okay that property you know uh that you know uh uh, uh it, if it's approval is equals to like that property is equals to reject you know something like that that expression also you can write it over here or else uh the decision table that we will see today and, the, uh, and then there is a decision tree and uh decision fork fork we already discussed it's a for when and the map value that i've already told you right map value is nothing but uh decision map Okay, so what type of, and then there's a prediction and uh, score, uh, uh, like, you know, scoreboard model. This, this we, you know, hardly use it basically, you know, so we don't go. So the top most usable uh, uh, decisions type that are like, you know, it's a Boolean expression. So, you know, our decision uh, tree table and fork and the map value. So, uh, like, you know, so, uh, so we'll see this one, fork one. So now I've clicked on the fork and then I'll just submit this and then. Then if you just double click on this connector, so we can just write it out when rule here. So you can see here. So I can say label it as yes. And then I can say this is a when rule. Okay, so this is again the when rule is a different type of rule that we have to create. Like the way we have like you know property section. So we can create a different when rule. So is uh, approved. Okay, so I'll just create this when rule. So here we go. I mean, yeah, this is how actually basically that you know when rule looks like. So just go to the advanced tab, you know, where the, where you can configure the when rule very properly. And then here you can just design it a very simple way. Like, you know, so now it, all that you need to know is the property name uh that you know where that we select yes, uh, that approve reject. So that property name. Uh So see, yeah, approve reject. Okay, so this is the one. Approve reject is equals to uh, approve. That's it. So I've just saved it. So save the when rule. So now, uh, like, and then here you can just add multiple conditions to, like, you know, for example, uh, uh, for example, the loan amount, you know, is uh, should not be equals to greater than, you know, if it's less than thousand. I mean, you know, uh, and then I have entered like you know few more conditions. Uh, you know, any past loan is if it's yes, 
So like that. So and then uh, like you know, you can just label it as A, B, C, or you can label it as two, three. And the reason why we get this label so that you can as add, add a logic stream. Like you know, we know that our and or all logic that we have, right? So that logic that you can build here. For example, let's say we say that okay, one uh, or two uh, or three. So that means that any of any one of the condition is valid true, then it will this when when room if, uh, runs true. Or else, if we say like you know, um, uh, if we say and like you know, we have the and symbol, right? So now if we say and and then if we say and that means like you know, because so normal algorithm, like you know, if if you have an and logic, that means all one two three condition has to be valid to true. For example, if the manager or, or the loan representative said approve, but the loan amount is not like you know, it's not equals to what this is like you know, more than hundred thousand, sorry thousand, and this this is equals to no. Then you know this when rule returns to false, like that you know. So that is what like you know you can just de determine like you know for example we we can say that okay like you know is uh, this is that this is also possible. So one or like you know one or like two and three. Like, for example, one means like you know if if it's uh, either uh, this has to be true or this two and three. You know both of them has to be true. You know like that. So e that way like you know you can do that. So then either the same way we can do it with you know a b and c as well. I mean you know just like that. So that also that you know we can just do that. And only only thing is that we have to instead of that we have to change that logic to a b c and three. Okay, so for now, like you know, we have only one condition to check that is like you know, if the bank representative has that. So that's it. I've saved the uh, uh event rules, and then after that, uh, we'll just go to the process. And uh, okay, here it is. And then uh, I'll just type it here. That means what will happen is now, let's say in this assignment, if the manager or loan representative selected approve, then we'll end the process. And, and as soon as this uh, process ends, that we know that uh, there is nothing else that we need to do. Like, you know, if the if this process ends, then the Pega will call this approval wala, you know, this email basically, you know, approve email. And send that approval email to the customer. But whereas if we have rejection, like, you know, let's say, if it's if it's does not evaluate a true like you know if if it's a rejection then what we have to do is we have to go to the alternate stage right so for that for going or moving from one stage to another stage or moving from or primary stage to alternate stage the pega has given you one more automation shape you know which is called as a change to a stage right like this one so next stage means it will move to the next stage but we don't want to move to the next stage but we want to move our process to the entirely a, a different like you know alternate stage basically you know so alternate stage or it could be your any other primary stage too so here it is so now i'll just process it here and then if we just double click on it okay i'll just change this label to uh, uh, no okay and then uh the pay guys asking you okay where that you want to go uh, stage right so now let's say i'll say email notification and uh, here it is approval or rejection okay that is the page name that we have right so okay and then here i'm just saying that okay else okay here that's it that means that what i'm saying here is like you know uh so uh, and this is just a label, okay? So you can just give it anything, you know. So, okay, so now uh, what I'm saying is like, you know, is approved. How, how come, like, you know, Pega will know is approved? Then the Pega will come here and the Pega will say, okay, I have to check this uh, when rule, okay? So Pega will open this when rule, Pega will say, okay, like, you know, okay, this property is equals to approve. Then the Pega will, uh, uh, you know, the Pega will go here and end this process. And let's say the manager rejected to reject, I mean, manager selected reject, then the Pega, it will go here and we'll check the condition. Oh no, it's 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 a false. I mean, the when rule will return to false. And then if it's false, then we have given the all and one more path to decision shape saying that okay, like you know, if something goes wrong, if there's rejection, then you know, jump here, like you know, and then you have to go to this. I mean, come to this shape and where where in which, like you know, we are jumping it to the alternate stage. Okay, so now. After this, you can have end shape here. So, you know, if you remember, like, you know, uh, in one of the session I've talked about that in flow, we we can have only one start shape, but we can have multiple end shape too. So, and this is a case, you know, where it, this is a simple case, where in which you can have 
multiple in shape like you know here also uh, we can have one in shape and here also you can add one in shape you know so depending upon your decision you can just go here or you can go here and this is what the decision shape that you know, we have to use in fact in a normal process flow also right you know i mean this is this is got you know, the shape like a rhombus shape which we normally determine the decision one okay and then uh, if you double click on it either either you can either you can say else or else you know if you want to write a different when condition you know all together here then you can choose that too you know, uh, you can you can just select that, and then you can just you know write the different when condition like you know when should it go for ejection. Let's say uh, <clears throat> we have like you know three to four parameters on which you know we decide basically like you know uh, it it has to go for rejection. You know, other than you know selecting other than the bank representative and all this stuff. So in that case, we can go ahead with the write the when rule. But okay, otherwise, if it's only that, you know, else, I mean, otherwise, only that, you know, the only one condition that we want to check. Otherwise, you know, we want to move it to something else. Okay, so now what we'll do is like, you know, of course, I have saved it. So now we'll see it like, you know, whether it's working as expected or not, or basically that a functionality, basically, it's, you know, uh, uh, reached or not. So now uh, it's, let's say, uh, th this time, let's say if the person is, uh, applying for a loan and let's fill the details. Okay. Education loan and then let's say continue. And then uh, it has went to this our uh, loan manager and the loan manager will open this assignment. And let's say he has rejected this one and then he will just leave some rejection comments. And then he will submit the screen and then uh, okay let to go there so okay so now you can see here i mean this time like you know we got an email saying that uh, okay so now you can see here this time email notification we are here oh, i mean uh, sorry approval uh, rejection that you know pega has completed this one you know approval rejection one and we got the rejection in email like you know your loan apl application has been got rejected okay so now based on that you can just change the status to because this is not a result completed right i mean this is result rejected so we, if you want then you can just go to a case type and change the status to let's say if the if we move here then it's not reject it's all rejected sorry result completed it's rejected so that by looking at so that you know by looking at this uh uh, uh status also we can get to know like you know what oh you know where that you know we have done so resolved or uh, rejected. Okay. <laughs> and then let's 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 uh, let's uh, test the other part too. Let's say for example, so already we have tested this uh, negative part, like you know, ejection part. So let's test that approval part too, like you know, whether that is basically because you know uh, we have to make sure that both the process, you know, approval rejection, you know, should work fine. So let's say at this time applying for a home loan and then this continue. Okay, and then this time the uh, that loan representative has approved my application and then approve and it's a submit. And then we can see that it's a result completed. And then this time we got an email saying that, you know, your loan has been approved. So like that, you know, so this is how, so now like, you know, we have divided our process i mean you know deviated the process you know based on the decision saying that you know like you know if something goes wrong or based on something like you know you can basically like you know go here and there like you know, like that and today we, we have talked about one more two shapes basically one shape is this a change to a next stage i mean change to change to a stage or you know move to a stage whatever like that and then you know and then another shape is a very important shape which is a decision shape so mostly like you know in the 99 or like 100% you know, of the project, basically, we go ahead with this, like, you know, with this decision shapes, uh, basically, like, you know, so because every process, like, you know, if you, if you talk about any process, right, you know, which, which, which has to need, like, you know, which sure will, will, will require basically the decision shape, you know, without this, like, you know, process, we won't be able to complete it, like, you know, because we have to take many decisions, like, you know, and all these things. If you take any example, insurance company, they're there also, like, you know, I mean, let's say I've applied for insurance, then there also, you know, rejection will be there and we, we will not perform the same action, you know, if the rejection and approval, right? I mean, we perform different, different actions in the case of approval or rejection or, uh, you know, or something like, you know, if in, 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 in any exceptions and all this stuff. 
Okay, so this is what that we have seen about when rule, and then you know, uh, this is the when rule, and then this is something like we have talked about. So we have a different type of a when rule that you know we have decision table. So how can we use that? So now, uh, we'll, okay, so now let's create the decision two. So in the decision rule two, like you know, I'm in. Uh, uh, Okay, so now all the decisions that we create comes under the decision category. Okay, so already we know that properties comes under DC data model category. And then, uh, you know, the decision, you can see here, there's one more category got added as a decision category. And then uh, inside that already we have created an event rule. Okay, and now we'll be creating another decision rule, which is called as a decision table. So let's do a right click here, create and uh, decision table. So determine, so I'll just put the name as uh, determine uh, loan uh, status or loan application status, whatever. Okay, so now just continue and open. Okay, so as a, as a name only suggests, right? Table means it, it will it will give you the Excel sheet kind of a structure or table kind of a structure, wherein which like and I can see here, you know, Pega gives it this kind of a thing, wherein which you have if otherwise, and then only one column that you have here is like you know in this, and then you can basically if you want then you can add more columns, you know, like that. So you know for your conditions and all the stuff. So I like that, and by default, it takes at the and condition, and you know, and, and also like you know, decision table will be useful to check. Like for example, if you want to uh, know that okay, who is my manager? You know, for example, let's say uh, on on the column, you know, we can just check with like the department. You know, uh, uh, the, the you know, uh, the, let's say I check, 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 I'm checking the department. Okay, so th this is the deleting the column. Okay, so. Okay, let's say department department, and then let's say I'm saying okay, if the if the department is equals to IT, then you know the manager name is like you know uh, let's say uh, Ankush, like you know let's say if that uh, department is equals to finance, you know then that you know the department the manager name is something, and then you know we'll put in it. So now whenever the decision table will call, like you know the, we check the department value. If let's say the person who has uh, selected uh, as uh, in the department as ID, then you know the, it will Pega will return this function as a as 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 a, as a manager, and then you know that particular work can assign it to me or something else like you know, like that. Or for example, let's say if you want to check that okay whether that particular person is eligible for a, uh with, with basically that particular person is eligible for a for a loan or not, you know. So you can just for determining that you know we have different parameters, right? I mean the civil score is should be greater than some seven seven fifty or something like that, and then he should not have any previous loan taken. For example, I've already taken a home loan. Then, uh, like you know, that particular person, you know, I mean, again, the home loan is not approved. His salary, you know, if the his salary should be greater than that, his job should be, you know, uh, some per, kind of a job, you know, it should should be doing that, and then he should not be NRI. He should be a Indian citizen. Something, something, all the parameters basically we can add a different, different, different thing. And then in the final, that we can just say that if everything returns, then yes, that means like you know, he's eligible for a loan. And then in the, in the, in the, and then also we can say that okay, civil score is let's say like you know, a here and there also goes, but still, you know, we can just give a loan, okay, yes. But let's say if uh, everything looks good, but he's not, a, he's a, he's a, like he's an NRI or you know, like that. Then we can say no, like you know, I mean, there are chances that he will take a loan and he can just fly away, you know, uh, for, and he will never ever return that money. So in that cases, we can just return, you know, the, the, all these things, like you know, it will give you, you know, a different different mechanism. You can just check the your conditions based on the properties. You can just refer our properties on the columns based on all those parameters. You can determine basically whether that you want to go ahead with the loan or not, like that, you know. So that is something that. Oh, then you know that that you can just do it. So in that case, for now, let's say, uh, let's say the column that you want to delete it, just click on the column, and then this is the one. Okay, the deleting deleting the column, and if you want to uh, delete a row, then this is the row that you want want to. You know, you can delete it, and then you can delete that. You know, any row, and then uh, yeah, and if you want to add a row or uh, adding a column, you know, so these are the symbols that uh, you can use it basically. So uh, now, like, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll follow the same process. I mean, the same thing that, you know, which we have uh, seen it. So now let's say here, I just want that. 
property name as uh, okay i'll copy it from here from this when rule okay um Reject. Okay, and then if I'll say if it's approved, if that value is approved, then I'll say yes. Like you know the yes, like you know I mean the loan is uh, loan application got uh, uh, approved, and then if it's let's say uh, it's reject, then let's say I'm saying no, and then let's say if none of the condition if also true, then by default what you want to set that you can say it like you know let's say if something uh, of course in our case we haven't given any option to the uh, user to select any other value but let's say in our case like you know which we have like you know by mistake like you know uh, set the uh, let's say that a user didn't select either approve or reject so by default what should happen either should should we approve the loan or reject the loan so in that case let's say we'll say that no like you know if the value is not true then we should not basically approve the loan so we said that no otherwise that means if the value is other than this and all those things so that's it. I've saved it. And then if you want to run, like, you know, if you want to check, you know, okay, like, you know, whether my decision table that whatever that I've configured, whether it's, uh, uh, it, it, it's uh, correct or not, you know, whether will it return the uh, correct condition or not, you know, so we, before using this inner flow, so you can basically run this decision table and uh, test it, like, you know, so just click on that action drop down and click the first button run, and then here it is. So now you can see here now that is approved reject. So now just enter um, uh, approve. And then as soon as you click on approve and then click on this run again button. And then you can see here the Vega is returning you and the decision table is returning you as yes. So and then let's say if you return something, uh, type it something else and then if you return it. So you can see here no. Okay, so that is like, you know, because we have given that, you know, if something values other than approve reject, it will return no. Okay, on the similar note, on the similar note, like let's say, like you know, if you have reject, uh, select reject. Okay, so now say again, like you know, it's returning no only. Okay, so now that means our decision table is working fine. So now that you know, we can basically use this in our flow. So this one. So now what I'll do is I'll just delete this shape. Okay, and not everything. Right click and okay, here it is. And then I'll again I'll by the shape decision table. Okay, I'll connect uh, with this and then uh, I'll double click on this decision table, decision shape, and then I'll select the decision table. Okay, and then from the decision table, so you can see here, hmm, I have a blue bar here. That means, like, if I click, click on the, the uh, uh, press the down arrow key from the uh, keyboard. Then it will give us uh, the decision table that we can use. So here it is on one. So this that we want to use it. So, so uh, just give it, give the label that what decision table is going to do is uh, check uh, loan application status. And then you can see here automatically there are two connection two connection you know automatically came out from this decision table right i mean uh okay let, if you want then i can show you it again too so for example let's say if i delete this, this so now that there is no con uh, no connectors right so now uh there is a decision shape and then uh for done it okay and now <clears throat> okay is loan approved okay then <clears throat> And then here I'm saying that, okay, I just want to use a decision table here. So now I, as soon as I select the decision table name and if I, as soon as I submit, and you can see here, there are two automatically, you know, connectors came out of the decision table. One is for yes and one is for no. And why why two? Because we have given, uh, you know, why? Because we have given two written, like, you know, yes, no. If, if in future, let's say if I'll add one more, uh, yes, no, or, you know, uh, not applicable, something like that, you know, so uh, then, you know, the, then the Pega will automatically will return like you know the third uh, option to like you know the third connected to. So now that up to you like you know where that you want to connect to. For example, if it's no, 
then uh, uh, if that's a that loan approvals no then you know you want to go here i'll just uh, jump here okay then uh, uh, then you want to go here basically like you know if it's a uh, loan is approved i mean let's say the loan is not approved then i want to go to this uh, rejection stage so i'll just uh, change this to a uh, move to rejection stage. okay i'm moving into the rejection stage and then after that i'll End the process that's it i don't want to perform anything else and then if it's yes then I, I don't want to do anything i mean because the next stage is basically you know uh, doing the same job so i just want to end this process you know if the loan has approved that's it so now this is the how this is how we can just configure a decision table and let's use this one so let's let's test this like you know so that uh so already we have tested with the when boom so now let's test the both the process like approve reject with the decision table so here it is here we go again suppose let's say i'm rejecting it so here you go so we have got the approval rejection so and then status also changed to a result rejected and let's verify the email yes we got that loan rejection email you know, and then uh, if we trust that, like, you know, our approval process. So now this is. There we go. This time I'm approving it. And then you can see here, I mean, the trusty test changed to result rejected. And then we got an, you know, I mean, approval email you know right? like that you know so this is how basically like you know you can configure so now you can see here now that you know we have added one more feature to our process where in which we can deviate our process i mean now that you know i mean uh, every time you know uh, so uh, every time will not jump to email notification so now we know that when uh, now that we have uh, uh, tilt to the pega also like you know when you have to go to the order stage or when when you have to move ahead, you know, with the other processing, you know, other, uh, uh, like, you know, or the next primary stages, you know, so that is how basically you can configure it, you know, and that, and that we have done it with the help of our decision table. And as well as we have seen that, the same, you know, we can do it with the well rule team. So it's up to you, like, you know, decide, like, you know, if, let's say if you have some uh, multiple properties and all these things that you have it, it's up to you. Like,